Hello everybody and welcome to my video on this, the Pentax IQ Zoom Easy R. Why? Because it's easy. This is a 35mm autofocus point and shoot camera, which means it can take any 35mm film. It has automatic focus in the lens and all you really have to do with this camera is point it at a thing and take a photo and something will be recorded. If you'd like to know what those photos from this camera look like, well, here's a few that I took with this camera. It uses a six zone matrix for metering. It has a leaf-like shutter, is how, how the manual, I believe, described it, which probably means it has a guillotine shutter. The shutter speeds go from 1 3rd to 1 32nd of a second based on exposure needs, plus bulb, the flash sync on this camera is whatever speed the shutter decides to shoot at. I feel like there's something wrong with that shutter speed range because that's awfully slow, but uh, maybe not. It's what's written in the script. I'm going to assume I did my job right when I wrote it. The target market for the Pentax IQ Zoom Easy R was the entry-level market, which we know because it has plastic construction, very few control options, basically flash and zoom settings. And the manual provides no input whatsoever into how things work, only some basic guides on the camera setting. Now, when a manual doesn't go into detail about how a camera functions, that says that the target audience is a less experienced audience who's not going to be interested or would be intimidated by all kinds of complex discussions about functions. The viewfinder also only covers 83% of the frame or an approximation of what's in the frame since it is a viewfinder camera. And that's because this camera, like many of the 90s point and shoot cameras, was designed for significant image cropping. And I don't know if you know this or not, but back in the late 80s, 90s, and even into the early 2000s, when you would send your film off to the lab, they'd develop it, and then they'd print the photos. And the photos that you got back were never full frame. They didn't go corner to corner of your negative. They were always what somebody at the lab would look at and go, yeah, this, this looks like it's framed well. Crop out 30% of this photo. They'd zoom in and they'd crop out, they'd level your images, and your photos would always come back looking better than they actually were because of the cropping and the leveling, which of course would make people want to take more photos. So this was designed for that era when there was tons of cropping getting your photos back from the lab, and uh, that's why there's so little viewfinder coverage. It was made by the Asahi Optical Company in China in the mid-90s, but I couldn't find the exact years that this was produced. It was preceded by the Pentax IQ Zoom EZ and followed by the EZ S. Now, as we do, let's go over all of the camera's features and functions. This right here is your flash red-eye reduction toggle. So when your camera is on and your flash is on, you can push this button to toggle whether or not you're going to get a red eye reduction burst of light before your photo is taken. Flash options button. So these are your different flash options and I'll go through a little bit later in the video in detail what all of those are. Frame count, self timer, and uh, self timer and force infinity button. So if you push it once, self timer. If you push it a second time, it will force the camera to do infinity focus. Zoom. Well, that is fun, even if the motor does sound a little bit sick. Power button, shutter release right here. We'll only take photos if there's film in the camera. On the camera's front, we have the Pentax logo, indication that it has autofocus right there, light sensor window, autofocus windows, viewfinder window, self-timer uh, self light and flash here, model info, and lens. On the camera's back, we have the viewfinder window, the indications for zooming in or zooming out, the film type indicator window that you can look through and see what kind of film you have, film back release button. On this side we have the, the camera strap connection, on this side we have nothing. On the bottom we have the force rewind button right here, which you don't push when you rewind it, but if you 
get halfway through a roll and you're done for the day and want to drop it off at the lab, then you use it. I didn't expect that. <laughs> okay, then you just use a, uh, a tip of your pen, pencil or, or key or something like that to just push that and it will force the film to rewind. Asahi Com Op Company Limited, assembled in China, CE stamp, um, tripod socket, serial number, battery chamber right here. First thing we're going to do with this camera to actually see how it works because you can't do anything without a battery, so we're going to put the battery in. Obviously, we know there's already a battery in it, but let's pretend that we're changing a dead battery. Again, with the tip of a pen or pencil or your key, you just push this back a little bit and then the battery chamber will pop open. The camera uses a single CR123 battery. And all that you've got to do to load a new one is drop it in and then do the reverse option with the tip of your pencil or key to close the battery chamber. Next up, let's load film. Loading film is pretty easy. All you have to do is push that unlock button down, open up the film back. Now inside the film chamber, what we can see is the film cassette chamber here. This is your lens, so there's some guide rails molded into the camera. This is your film take-up spool. And then there's a little orange mark over here on the side that tells you to push the actual leader of the film down into the take-up spool, and the camera will take over from there. So we're going to drop the film cassette in. I'm going to pull it out this way and close the film back. And it automatically advances to the first frame. Now when you take, when you turn on the uh, uh, camera, it's going to show you how many frames you, you the, which frame you're on. And it's going to take a picture. It's going to be so bright. Okay, yeah. The, Turn that off now. Uh, it's gonna let, take the picture and because I'm sitting too close it's not actually focusing and taking a picture so I have to keep force, forcing it to infinity. But whenever it takes a photo it's just going to take the photo, advance the film, and count up on the frame counter. And then when you get all the way through your entire roll of film what it's gonna do, I'm gonna force it to rewind, but it's gonna rewind the film for you. Once it's done, you just open up the back of the camera, take out your film cassette just like that. If you're going to keep shooting, just grab your next film cassette, drop it in like that, or if you're done for the day, just close the back of the camera and make sure it's turned off. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through all of the different shooting modes on the camera, and those are accessed by the flash button right here like this. We're going to start off here with no flash button no flash icon at all, just whatever frame you're on. There's no film loaded, so I'm on frame zero. When you have no symbol in your viewfinder, what that means is that you have auto flash. And that's a good general choice for shooting with this camera. It means the flash will turn on if it needs to, and it won't if it doesn't. If you push the flash button once, you'll get this flash icon. That means that the flash will always fire and during daylight, you'll get fill flash automatically with this, with this icon. If you want to use the flash, and if you're shooting in daylight, especially if you have a person that you're taking a photo of and they're in shade with something well lit behind them, this is a really good mode to use. Next up, we have an icon that shows a moon and no flash. This forces a slow shutter speed on the camera and disables the flash, but that slow shutter speed really isn't all that slow. This mode right here is intended for photos of things like fireworks or for use at your child's play or for cityscape images at night. So those are some things that you could do, especially if a city is lit up or something like that and you want to get capture the lights of the buildings or the streets without triggering the flash. The next mode we have here shows the moon again and the flash icon. This is the same mode as before, but the flash is triggered. So you get the same slower shutter speed, and then the flash will always fire. Now this mode is good for something like portraits at night. So let's say you have a, f a friend or a, someone you're going to take a portrait of, and they're sitting on a, uh, a bridge embankment in front of a lit up city. You can use this, 
you'll get the lights of the city because the shutter speed is kind of slow, and you'll also get the flash triggering which will illuminate your friend in the foreground. Next up we have the no flash icon again and the sun. This is called backlight compensation without using a flash. So what this is, is let's say that you're sitting in a sunny setting where there's a beach or something like that in the background and you're at a cafe with an awning over you under the shade. If you use this, what's gonna happen is you'll get a slightly longer shutter speed to illuminate the person who's under the shade with you that you're taking a photo of, but no flash. Next item is no flash icon and B for bulb mode. This is bulb mode shooting with no flash. So this is good for very long exposures in the dark, for manually firing an off-camera flash when you want to, or for doing star trails if you can rig up your shutter button to be held down for a long period of time. And with cameras that don't have a, uh, a cable release socket on them, what I'll usually do is when I'm out taking a star trails, I'll look for a, I'll bring some, some good rubber bands with me. When I'm out there, I'll just look for a rock I'll just put the rock on top of the, uh, the shutter button kind of like this, and then I'll put some rubber bands over it, and then when I put them over the rock, they'll hold the shutter button down. It is good and cheap. The last uh, option here is the flash icon with bulb, and this is the flash will fire and you shoot in bulb mode. One thing to note here is that the flash is locked to front curtain sync, uh, so this is good if you're taking a portrait of a person at night with something very dim in the background and you want to still capture that dim subject. What you can do is have the photo be taken and then hold the shutter open for 10 seconds or 30 seconds and just have the person sit there after the flash fires until you're done and uh, you'll be good to go. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is how to take a photo with this camera. This camera's really simple to use. There's not a whole lot to doing it to taking a photo. You're going to look through the viewfinder, you're going to compose your scene, you're going to zoom in or out as much as you would like, and yes, the, zo the viewfinder does zoom with your zoom, so you know what's going to be kind of in the center-ish area of your frame. And then you take your picture. I don't have film loaded, so it's not actually going to take a picture, but that's it. That's how the, it's that simple. What about double exposures? Can't do it. This camera has double exposure prevention, so there are no double exposures with this camera. I do have some additional tips for you on ways to maximize your use with the Pentax IQ Zoom Easy R. The first one is that this camera was never designed as one that would have an array of creative uses that require a lot of exposure flexibility. You can do a little bit with the bulb in the flash mode settings, but really, this was just meant to be a carry around quick point and shoot camera. So just understand that the, that's a limitation that this camera is going to have and you can still do a lot with it, but it's gonna require that you be more creative than you might be used to because of the limitations. At the time that these were made, as I mentioned, most labs did a lot of cropping on your images before giving them back. So the lens on this is going to perform best in the center that I, I wouldn't, the, the sample images I showed you at the front were all full frame, but honestly, uh, don't expect a whole lot from this camera's performance outside of an area that's slightly larger than an APS-C sensor. So if you do want to use this camera most effectively, try central composition of your subjects with this camera. Also, the last thing is that your ISO is set automatically with your film's DX codes, which are not present on this roll of film. Most rolls of film have silver and black codes like this. That's the DX code. The camera reads that with some contacts that are inside of it to determine what speed film that you, you have loaded and to use the correct settings for that. If you load your own film, they do make DX code stickers that you can use to put on your, your film cassette to get the correct uh, speed with it. Or if you do want to push and pull film, you can buy those same stickers and put them over the DX code area on your faster or slower film. And that is really it for this IQ Zoom Easy R. Empirically a very simple camera that you can use to take some pretty quick and easy snapshots and probably now affordable enough that it's worth taking into places where it could easily be damaged because if it, if it does get damaged, it's not the end of the world. But still, 
a fun and easy to carry around little point and shoot. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.